I'm delighted to welcome designer Martin Pahiniak to the show. Martin, thanks so much for being here. It's great to be here, thank you. Jolly good, jolly good. Now Martin works as a designer, but you also do a lot of training of Adobe products, don't you? Can you tell us how you got into doing that? Yeah, that's actually an interesting story because I always wanted to teach, although I was into design. I always like to share my passion about design. And uh, Adobe has this certification system, which is great. You can become an expert. And you can also become a certified instructor. So I actually became one through um, doing all these uh, exams for Adobe. Yeah. And then through the uh, Adobe system, I got to work in London. Yeah. Well, I actually got all kinds of different... Uh, because you're from Hungary. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm from yeah. Hungary. I started yeah. working there. Actually, I was one of the first uh, instructors or certified instructors in yeah. Hungary. But then, uh, thanks to all these uh, exams, I got to work in England uh, at the, one of the leading Adobe training centers. Yeah. And then after that, I started doing design here. So I try to strike a balance between doing both yeah. teaching and doing the design. It's a nice mix, isn't it? A lot of our professionals uh, that we work with at Adobe do keep both of those sides going. But you must be kept really busy keeping up to date with the latest releases now, right? Of course, yes. There's so many new features yeah. all the time, yeah. constantly. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. So I'd love to see some of your work. Would you talk us through a few of your projects? Of course. I'm going to show it on Behance. This is a great way to showcase your portfolio as a designer. Yeah. And um, I worked in, uh, in the recent years, I worked on really interesting projects. Like for Disney, I did uh, licensing design and uh, I, mean, I had uh, worked on projects like Cars ah, and Toy Story. And these are the things that uh, you design and then it shows up all around the world. Yeah. So all the licensees will buy these and they use it on their products. Yeah. So that was an interesting project I worked on. Then I do also digital art illustration and uh, these are the things again I do in Photoshop. And um, mm -hmm. this is used on all kinds of different places. I do web design and um, I worked for companies like Mattel when again I did these posters for them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's all been really fun working for these uh, companies. It's really varied, the work that you do then, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I didn't even talk about retouching. I do a lot of retouching, yeah. like beauty retouching for uh, magazines yeah. and all kinds of different things. This keeps me. life very interesting and busy for you, hey? Definitely, <laughs> yes. So I know that you work a lot with Photoshop and also um, Illustrator and the other Creative Cloud services you use as well. But we're going to start off with Illustrator because you've kindly pulled together the key features that you work with all the time, haven't you, since the launch of Creative Cloud? Yes, that's, that's right. I'm going to start with a couple of features in Illustrator. So I just highlighted some of my favorite features, so it's not an extensive list. But one of the things I really like, and this is, this is a great addition to uh, all the features we have in Illustrator, it's yeah. called corner widgets and live shapes. And essentially what happens when you use this is you can click on any corner and you can turn it into a rounded corner, quite similarly to what we already had in InDesign. Mm -hmm. That also was recently introduced, but now we have the same option here. And of course you can do this on one corner or more corners at the same time. But the best thing is when you actually apply it to more abstract shapes, like even this one here, when you use these corner widgets, by the way, you have to have the direct selection to select it to see them. When you do that, it actually applies to all the corners of these shapes. And then you can see that when you are working, let's say, on branding and you do logo design, this is a great way to come up with variations on the same theme. So you can see how easy it is to do, uh, just select them and change the corner back and forth. Yeah. And it's non-destructive. And so this is really saving you a lot of time working. Yeah, definitely, way, definitely. Yeah. And also not just saving time, but opening up new ways to do things. Yeah. As a designer, it's very important to be inspired. And if an application can inspire you, that's a great thing. Yeah. So, so you actually get inspired by the new features to try out new things within your designs. Exactly. It's fantastic. It's always 
well, sometimes it's like a happy accident that yeah. really pushes the design yeah. further yeah. and uh, these are invaluable these features for that so this is a real benefit for the fact that you make sure that you're always up to date with the latest features exactly right? exactly it's very very useful to do that well the other feature which is also really cool is the touch type tool uh, uh, yes i love this tool it's brilliant. yeah so this Again, to make your typography more interesting, uh, you can just select any of the characters and without turning it into outlines, so mm -hmm. it's still an editable text, you can make any changes to it. So you can first of all resize each character, mm -hmm. then you can move it around and you can also even rotate them. Yeah. And you can see how all the other characters in the text will realign mm -hmm. based on that change. Yeah. So that makes it really interesting or oh, really easy to make these more funky effects yeah. on typography but still keep it editable yeah and of course another great thing which was introduced in uh, cc is the type kit which makes it very easy to get uh, both desktop and web fonts yeah. which then you can synchronize between your applications and you can even filter them out so if you click on apply type kit filter yeah. you can find whatever is on your computer at the moment yeah so this is great so these are web fonts originally that are now being available a lot of them now to download to your desktop to work in any of your desktop applications exactly and it also helps a lot when you have missing fonts which is yeah. quite an annoying thing yeah to find those missing fonts maybe download them directly from your Creative Cloud membership, yeah. that's that makes it so much easier yeah. to work. Yeah, in fact, Illustrator actually suggests that it sorts that out for you now, doesn't it? If exactly. it opens it up, the fonts are missing, it'll ask you, do you want me to it, Yes, fix when you this open a document, you? it comes up automatically. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Then another thing which actually saved days in my work yeah. is the image brushes in Illustrator. Yeah. Um, in Photoshop, you can also create custom brushes, but you are restricted to a grayscale uh, color mode, so you can only have black and white colors. Mm. But uh, in Illustrator now, you can create pattern brushes or even other scatter brushes mm. using photographs. So for example, when you, I, I do retouching on jewelry as well, yeah. and sometimes when they take pictures of jewelry, like the necklace is not in the correct way, and then you actually, in post-production, you have to realign it. Yeah. And to be able to do that with this tool, it just saves so much time. Yeah. So you can see, I just picked this little section of the chain out, yeah. just so I can then repeat that. And once I go into the brushes, uh, I can just simply drag and drop this image. Mm -hmm. So I just simply drag and drop it there. And then I choose pattern brush, click on OK. And then I just simply click on OK again here. Yeah. And once I have all this set up, so it was fairly easy to do that. Yeah. Once I have this set up, I can just simply create anything even with the pencil tool and apply yeah. the chain. Fantastic. And the cool thing that's also a new feature, uh, whenever you use the pencil tool, you can also switch to the smooth tool easily, yeah. or of course you can change it to the brush tool as well. So essentially once you saved it as a, a brush, you can do anything with that, with that tool and you can create amazing shapes. You can choose the way in which the corners happen as well within that tool, can't yes, you? You've got exactly. lots of exactly. If you have a bit more time, you can set it up perfectly. Yeah. So yeah. then you can just draw nice yeah. chains. Yeah. And of course, we've got um, a fantastic new app as well, mobile app for the Creative Cloud, that you can create brushes as well, which you can then bring into Illustrator. So we'll see that in action a little bit later. Martin, thank you so much for sharing those tips with us. Do stay tuned because Martin will be back later in the show to show his top Photoshop CC features. He'll also be talking about the other services that he uses as part of the Creative Cloud. But now it's time to take a look at the newly enabled touch functionality within Illustrator CC. We're going to go over to Adobe Max. Hey, I hear the voice of a preacher from the back room. Call him a name and a follow just to find you. I trace the faith to a broken down television. I want to get better. Michael, 
is gonna share with all of us the latest release of a product that we all love and know, Adobe Illustrator, with magical support for touch. Take it away, Michael. Thank you, Paul. So what we're seeing here is the full version of Adobe Illustrator running on a Microsoft Surface Pro 3 with the keyboard attached. What we've done is we've developed a new workspace that takes advantage of the unique characteristics of this two-in-one device, notably the touchscreen and the pressure-sensitive pen. Now, as you might expect, if we take the keyboard off the Surface Pro 3, Illustrator automatically switches to this new workspace. And you'll see it kind of looks instantly familiar, but a little bit different at the same time. Now, it being a touch device, of course, we've got the gesture support for panning and zooming, as you might expect. But there's much more to it than that. We've actually developed a new set of tools and new interactions to get this to work. There we go. OK, so one of the first new tools I'm going to show is the touch curvature tool. I'm going to go ahead and draw a heart shape. Now, that may think, you may think that's an actually easy shape to draw. It's actually pretty complex if you've never mastered the regular pen tool. As I draw, you'll see I get a nice little preview of the curves I'm going to get as I hover over the canvas. Because I want to draw a heart shape, I want this to be a corner point. So to convert that, I just double tap and keep drawing. Go down to the bottom of the heart. Again, I want that to be a corner point, so I double tap to convert it, and I go back to the end to complete it. So you'll notice I didn't have to switch between different versions of the pen tool. I didn't have to know secret keyboard shortcuts. Best of all, I didn't have to deal with those Bezier handles. Who thinks that's awesome? All right. So as I complete that heart, I want to go ahead and give it a red fill and stroke. And I showed you a second ago, we had the gesture support for panning and zooming. You can use those same gestures to directly manipulate objects. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. I really like touch. I can even rotate just using the rotate gesture and so forth. This just really changes how it feels to work inside Illustrator, being able to directly manipulate those objects on the screen. One of the things I do often when I'm creating logos or icons in Illustrator is that I'll trace a reference image. I'm going to go ahead and trace this avocado using that touch curvature tool again. And you'll see as I'm doing this, I'm not really having to think about it all that much. I'm just dropping down points. And Illustrator's automatically creating those pleasing curves. If I need to adjust a point on a path, I just tap and drag it to its new position. Again, not having to deal with the Beziers if I don't want to. Go ahead and draw the pitch shape as well. And let's go ahead and finish this off by styling it with some swatches. You'll notice that as I'm working on the Surface Pro, sometimes I'm switching to the, my finger, sometimes I'm switching to the stylus. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever's more comfortable at any given moment as you're working through the interface. And there's that finished avocado. All right, let's take a look at what it's like to create a logo exploration just using some basic shapes. I'll go ahead and draw three circles here, like so, three different sizes. And we'll draw a couple diagonal lines as well. And to turn this into a logo, I actually want to select all these objects and then align them. We have a new touch optimized version of the align panel as well. So instead of that grid of 12 little icons you get to memorize in InDesign, Illustrator, or Photoshop, watch what happens as I hover over that touch panel with the stylus. Yeah, pretty sweet. You get a little preview of what's going to happen. So I can align them all at the top, or I'll just tap the center to align them in the centers. I'm going to switch to one of my favorite tools in Illustrator. It's the Shape Builder tool. And that's used to quickly merge or subtract overlapping shapes. It's a lot more fun when you use it with a stylus. I joke, I call it Pathfinder on a stick. I'm going to go ahead and choose my fill color. And I'm just going to quickly merge the shapes that I want to combine into this logo exploration. I'll switch to an orange, pick that shape there. I'm going to switch to the subtract mode. I'm just going to quickly swipe through and draw through the elements I don't want to make up that logo. To finish this off, we'll go ahead and get rid of that stroke. And you can see, just with a few basic shapes, using that align panel and then using Shape Builder with that stylus, dare I say it's actually fun <laughs> to experiment inside Illustrator here. Awesome. All right, one of the things that I love about the Surface Pro 3 is being able to draw directly on the screen with this very precise pressure-sensitive stylus. You can see I've got the variable strokes. The harder I press, the thicker the stroke, of course. I'm going to go ahead and complete this leaf drawing. So I'm going to lower the brush width just a little bit, get it to the way I want it. When you're nervous, your hand is shaking just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to draw in some of those additional leaves. And you'll see as I do this, I'm not really all that accurate, am I? Some of the pads are open, some of them are overlapping, because I want to show you yet another new tool 
It's called the Join Tool. And watch what happens when I simply draw over those paths. Awesome. All right, to finish that off, let's go ahead and give it a green fill color. And we'll switch back to that brush tool and paint in those center lines. Awesome. All right, in June, we released Ink and Slide, and you saw the digital version of that, the Touch Slide Ruler. I don't know about you, but as an Illustrator user, I was really jealous. I was like, man, I want that inside Illustrator. Anyone agree? So in the new Touch Workspace, we have the new Stencil tool. And you'll see that we've got some shapes that I can draw with, trace with. I've got the French curves. So I can go ahead and make that French curve just a little bit bigger, scale and rotate it. And this makes it easy to create these really complex curves, as long as I have a stroke color you guys can actually see. There you go. So I can just trace on screen directly with that and do that a couple of times. I'll switch to the digital ruler. And there's that touch slide ruler to draw parallel lines and keep them in parallel as I draw. So let's go ahead and draw the first line, draw a second one. And I'm going to create a lightning bolt really quick just by knocking out this, these lines. We'll rotate that into position. And we'll draw two more to finish this off. I can scale that down just a little bit. And then to finish this off, again, I'll go back to that Shape Builder tool. And we'll just merge the lines that we care about. And we'll get rid of the lines we don't. You can see it's just a little playful experience to draw directly on the screen like that. And there you have it. That's just a taste. It's just a taste of what it's like to use Illustrator on a two-in-one device. I guarantee you, if you try this yourselves, it's going to be really hard to go back to use Illustrator with a mouse. Thank you very much. We really want to hear from you, so take part in our Twitter competition by sending in a creative tweet to tell us about your top Creative Cloud features. Our Adobe panel of judges will select their favorite tweet from each Northern European country, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland, and the UK. The winners will receive a 12-month membership to the Creative Cloud. But not only that, the overall tweet from all the regions will win a Microsoft Surface Pro 3. So get posting your tweets using the hashtag Create now. The competition is open from midday on the 10th of November till midnight on the 13th of November. And you can see full details, terms and conditions at this URL. Good luck.